Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to set up a storage node on a Raspberry Pi 5. I just got my hands on the uh, 5 version. This is an 8 gigabyte card. Um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to assemble everything, set it up and um, do everything basically from A to Z. Uh, getting the uh, Raspberry Pi and storage node up and running, um, making sure I can remote into it, making sure the, the node is running, uh, adding a fan for this and all sorts of things. Um, I hope you enjoy the video and uh, if you like this kind of content, please give it a subscribe. I am planning to uh, keep making videos about how this Pi will perform with the storage node. Um, also, it's going to be a 12 terabyte hard drive that's going to be hooked up to this little guy. Um, but of course, I can always upgrade in the future if it gets filled up. Thank you guys for watching. Let's get building. All right, so I've just gone ahead and opened up the Raspberry Pi, taken out of the box. Uh, pretty much nothing but the Raspberry Pi and a manual comes with it. Um, I went ahead and bought this micro HDMI to full-fledged HDMI um, that I can use to basically get a screen output um, just because it makes the whole setup a lot easier uh, to deal with. Now this has uh, one gigabit ethernet and two um, USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0. Um, I will be connecting an NVMe uh, to this uh, right here and the 12 terabyte to the one right here and then these two will be left for mouse and keyboard. Uh, whenever I need to do um, stuff uh, on the Pi. Um, I went ahead and also bought a little fan from the official uh, Raspberry Pi creators. Um, it looks like this and it has some thermal pads underneath and you can connect this little wire to the uh, little fan header right here. So I'm definitely going to do that. And then I also have a little funny contraption right here. This is a uh, NVMe SSD that goes to uh, SATA um, and I'll use that as the boot drive and then I have a um, power and a USB converter that will keep make sure that this is powered and it gets the USB connection to plug it into the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do now is first I'm going to close up this enclosure. There's like a, an enclosure here you can put on so it's basically a form factor like a 2.5 inch SSD. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put on the fan and I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I have just gone ahead and put the fan on. It's actually quite a neat and nice uh, little um, configuration here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be plugging this um, NVMe SSD kind of enclosure Frankenstein thing into the PC, and then I'm gonna uh, um, etch an uh, image on there so we can get Linux running on this little Pi. So I'll see you when that is done. All right, so as you can see right here, I've gone ahead and used the official Raspberry Pi imager. I've just chosen the Raspberry Pi 5 as the uh, Pi device, the operating system as Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, and then the little uh, storage that I have plugged in with a USB uh, to SATA converter. So it's all nice and good, and it's writing, and I'll see you in a bit. All right, so as you can see, I have just powered up everything. The Pi is powered, it has HDMI, and it has USB running to our OS drive. And we are currently seeing that it is booting up. Um, it says that, as you can see right here, USB boot requires high current 5 volt 5 amp power supply. To disable this check, set max USB in the config as CST, or press the power button to temporarily enable USB max current and continue booting. So I am using a uh, 3 amp power supply and I'm believing that it's gonna be fine because all of my drives are powered by 12 volt input uh, running right from a mains uh, connection. So I actually want to go ahead and do this in the config. Uh, the only problem is I actually don't know how to enter this config.txt. Um, I'm thinking that if we press the power button to temporarily enable USB max current enable, um, as it says, press power button, then we can probably boot up and then edit the config.txt. So I'll try that. I don't know what it's doing now. It's just running the whole thing again. I'll just try that real quick and I'll get back to you. All right, so after pressing the power button as the thing suggested, it went into the temporary mode and it allowed me to actually be able to boot. So I'm gonna go ahead and run through the setup. I'm not gonna film this because I think it's pretty ex explanatory, self-explanatory. I just need to hook up the mouse and keyboard to the Pi and then I'll see you when I actually have to change the TXT config file.
All right, so it finally updated and I set everything up and I went into the Raspberry Pi configuration. And as you can see here, you can actually just disable the USB current limit. Now, the reason that I'm gonna go ahead and do that is because I'm confident that the power draw will be from this connector and not the USB from the Raspberry Pi itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this and I think that's gonna be completely fine. And maybe in the future, I'll upgrade to a better power supply if anything does become unstable. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and press this and press okay. Great, so now I will install a VNC server so that I can always remote into the Raspberry Pi and I'll see you in a bit. All right guys, so I just booted up into the Pi and as you can see here, I'm running the script to download the identity uh, file where you can create an identity. Now I am gonna show you how to create it on the Raspberry Pi itself, but I'm actually gonna just create it on my Mac just because it will take a lot of time to create it on the Raspberry Pi, but it is definitely an opportunity, um, you can do it. Uh, but you can also just create it on a more powerful machine and then you can run uh, or put it into WeTransfer, for example, and just download it onto your Raspberry Pi. Um, but please follow the guide on the uh, Stoic website for creating the identity and signing it with your inv invitation token. Um, that way you're doing it uh, the way you're supposed to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip that process because it's very well documented in the Stoic uh, docs. Um, but as you can see here on the screen, I did start creating the uh, keys on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, but I'm going to stop it and just do it on my uh, more powerful uh, machine. All right, so I am just going to go ahead and mount the hard drive. I'm going to use Departed UI for this, um, just to make sure I'm doing it right. Uh, this is the first time, uh, well, not the first time, but it's one of the first times I've ever done this. So please bear with me. I'm going ahead a little bit slow. Um, Departed is part of the official uh, Raspberry Pi OS, um, which is a, a user interface or easy user interfaceable a uh, program that you can use to allocate disk space and partitions and all this stuff. Now I am going to be using that and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, create some partition. Now I did press something wrong here, but I'm sure that I will figure it out. It just takes a little while because I haven't done it many times before. Um, as you can see, you can go up and press uh, create partition and you can choose GPT. That is what I chose. Um, that should be fine. I then did go ahead and uh, make sure everything looked good and I gave it, gave it a partition name and I used the file system ext4 as I believe that is the uh, recommended uh, file system for uh, the uh, storage nodes and I did then press the green check icon and then that applies all the operations. Now I did go ahead and just uh, install Docker here on the system. You have to do that to get the storage node running. I'm not gonna show you how to do it because it's also very well documented on Docker's official site. But what I will say is that sometimes um, Docker and a brand new Pi OS can have some trouble so that after installation, you might have to just really quick log out and log into the Raspberry Pi again uh, because of some permissions. Um, as you can see on the command on the screen, this is what I did to install Docker. Um, it wasn't too uh, hard, but if you run into problems with this kind of stuff, I can recommend asking ChatGPT and showing them exactly what kind of uh, steps you took and what kind of errors you're getting. Um, but I installed Docker and I was ready to move on to the next phase. Now, this little clip right here is just me uh, downloading the identity uh, from my Mac. Um, this was just quickly to show you an alternative way of doing it instead of actually creating the identity on the Raspberry Pi. At this stage, it already has been signed with my um, invitation token. So please do that before you send it over with retransfer. I think that's the easiest and actually best way to go ahead with it. Now at this stage, I went ahead and downloaded the uh, Story Labs uh, storage node image from, um, from uh, Docker Pull. I also went ahead and uh, entered ifconfig into the terminal. This way I could uh, identify what the uh, uh, local IP was of the storage node. So I could go into my console and actually port forward the port that I want to use. Now I'm going to use port 3000, but you don't have to. And as you can see right there, I found the IP. Um, I'm going to use port 3000, but you definitely don't have to. It's up to you. Um, and then I went ahead and copied in the Docker run command so that I was ready for the next phase.
Now, at this stage, I had identified my paths for the identity. I just put the identity of, on the desktop of the Pi, and then I also uh, identified the path of the data. Um, I then went ahead into the console and pasted the Docker run command to set up the uh, storage node. It went successfully. Um, a little tip that I'll give you is if you have any problems with, for example, um, uh, what users can do what on the disks that you have on your Raspberry Pi, ChatGPT once again will help you uh, give the right commands to uh, get the correct privileges to, for example, make folders on the uh, drive itself. It is something I had a problem with, um, and that was simply because I hadn't given myself read-write uh, um, privileges, but only uh, uh, read. So just a little tip. The next phase is actually setting up the Docker run command. Now, in this phase, I set up the Docker run command. Now, please notice that I use the port 3000 on TCP and UDP. Um, you have your um, your dashboard on 14,200. You have your wallet. I put in an email for this video. Uh, you have your uh, IPv4 address with the uh, port, and you have the amount of storage that you want to allocate. And then, of course, you have your path. Now, this is your whole Docker, current, uh, Docker, Docker run file, or uh, Docker run command, sorry. I'm just going to go ahead and paste it into the terminal, and that way we should see immediately that the Docker node is spinning right up. As you can see right there, uh, we saw the um, little ID of the uh, Docker image or Docker container, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the right ter terminology is. That should mean that we can access localhost 14200, and we should be able to see that the storage node is running. And just like that, we can confirm the storage node is indeed running, Everything looks okay. We have no errors. That also means port forwarding went well. And we can see that we have a zero suspension order online. That will change. It's just because the node is brand new. And we can see our total allocated disk space. So that worked great. All right, so here, after we have set everything up and we have waited a bit, we can now refresh the page and we should be able to see that some bandwidth has been going. We can see that the uptime is 37 minutes, so it has been a little while. Now, the bandwidth used this month is still zero bytes, and you might wonder why. My theory is that that's just because the satellites of the storage nodes haven't been updating the actual um, used storage yet, so that should change in a couple of days or at least some hours. But if we scroll down, we can actually see that we have already downloaded 11 gigabytes. That is great. That is means that data is flowing into the node and everything is working correctly. Um, I would like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. It has been a pleasure uh, creating this content for you and I'm hoping to keep making updates about this Raspberry Pi 5 storage node in the future, um, telling you guys how it's performing, what it's earning and so on and so on. So if you like this kind of content, if you want to see more, consider giving me a subscribe. I believe 2% of my watchers are subscribed. so. Not a lot, but thank you so much for watching. See you guys in a bit.